It gives so much value to the speaker. Okay. Speaking about speaking is not as easy as it sounds. The sound of your own voice comes in between. When speaking about speaking, one might as well speak about listening. When listening while speaking, one might discover what one is actually saying. Do you ever listen to yourself? The body of your own voice. It's a bit similar to when people ask me also what language I think in. It's quite difficult to say because I grew up in Norway and um, in that sense more exposed to Norwegian language but then I grew up in a biling bilingual family where uh, my father is English. He spoke English at home and I um, went to an English school. Um, I started to read and write in English before Norwegian and so it's always been between languages and I'm also quite into languages, obviously. And uh, so by living in Germany and Holland and Sweden, it's always also been influenced by those. And now it's very, very dissected and, and split and everywhere. The tongue is a muscle filled with blood. Its feeling is of that of a feeling. Itself is warm. Blood against blood makes my mouth a little warm. Cave. Ancient home. I know that for an ancient fact. But that's about that. I, I find that I have some sort of quality for seeing rhythm in text, or seeing melody in text. It's anything from, from reading a commercial or like a, a sort of notification saying don't sit in the staircase. Uh, in Norwegian, that actually sounds very good. Sittiki trappa tak. And then there's all these consonants and these Ks. I think that's also quite particular with sound that it's it has such a sort of fine nuance of like pleasure and, and pain. And also the way you can say a word until it loses its actual meaning. It just kind of falls out of your tongue and you say it. A word and it's you're just not sure if, if it exists anymore that's a very strange sort of this whole subconscious and like hallucinogenic idea of language and sound faqu ask your way around what is the time what time is it who is the time when is time why is the time where is the time when does the time what does the time time what does the clock what is the clock who is the clock why is the clock when is the clock when is the clock the clock when is the clock not? I've always been writing and at some point I wanted to work more with, with the body and like how or personification of language rather than just purely printed matter. There's so much um, human in, in speech. It's really a place where I feel comfortable like to, to speak, to perform a text vocally and let that stand for itself, let's say, in, in the context. Whereas just being me, which is not what I, what I am when I'm performing, is, is some, something else, I find. And you're like speaking up or being part of a, of a discussion or something, I often have a very hard time. I think it's the fact that everyone's listening or the fact that you know that you really have to have something to say now. There are seven essential principles that you must practice as an entrepreneur throughout your business life. If you are to achieve maximum success, they have been taught and repeated in thousands of books and articles over the years. What is your vision for yourself and your future? What is your vision for your family and your finances? 
What is your vision for your career and your company? Someone else wrote to someone once. Even if you're starting your business on the kitchen table, you must have a vision of becoming a world leader in your field, or you will probably never be successful. My, my work is probably a lot about um, sort of being like a voice behind someone's shoulder and just like speaking, and like or sort of trying sometimes maybe to be some sort of subconscious to like to like advertisement does, like you know, where you you just hear it constantly and playing on that idea of like what is informative, what is not informative, what is important, um, what needs to be said. Saying maybe what not doesn't need to be said, and then you say it in that context of a gallery, and it gets an extreme importance um, or a different importance, and also taking a certain text out of it con its context. Dimensional oblivion, waste, paper basket, banana basket, jam, jar, optimizing space, minimizing clutter, wood crate, coffin, coffee tin. Muffin top. Teen psychiatrist told me that whenever my problems were inclined to reoccur, I should imagine that the problem in itself was placed deep down in a box on top of a shelf in a room that I no longer lived in. The setup at, um, at Bold Tendencies is based on a piece um, which is called Attention Spam, um, which is about this uh, um, eye watch or like the step counter and that sort of having constant sort of reminder of what you're doing or how you're doing and if you're doing anything at all and you should be doing something. The text is based on this several psychology tests that you can find online to test if you are stressed or if you are uh, are you bipolar. And the questions are very strange, you know, you just obviously know which ones lead to what or like, you know, are you aggressive at work? Do you, do you, can you like control your emotions? Do you find yourself crying alone? I am unable to motivate myself to complete unpleasant but necessary tasks. I procrastinate on matters relevant to work. I tend to lose important things documents. I wish I didn't lose personal things documents because they are personal. When I use a bag to keep track of these important things documents, I instead lose the bag with the important things documents instead of the personal. I think getting an overview today of what you're doing and what your life is and where you're going is very hard. A lot of people, I think, are feeling things are getting a bit out of hand with communication and, and tasks. And we also really depend on, on like the, the iPhone or like our, our, our phones or our, like our digital devices to, to sort that out for us. Yeah, it's all about like sort of battle of time and, and space. I mean, everyone does these, do these lists and like you sort of have this, this constant organization of life. Like this feeling, this very sort of feeling of achievement when you've ticked boxes, when you've crossed out things. I know people who write down tasks that are like kind of insignificant just so they can cross them out. And I say I know people and maybe it's me. <laughs> but <laughs> I take pride in my work. I work persistently and all, all my tasks are complete. I ignore time as if it was an alien to my own body. I feel like I can never take a break because when I do, my body breaks too.